Section 5.1, Affirmation of Scorned Exteriority. All right, everything begins through an affirmation. The negation of the negation is the second moment. How can one negate the disparagement of oneself but through setting out on the path of the self-discovery of one's own value? Um, uh, so everything begins through an affirmation, that is a self-affirmation. Um, and then when he talks about the negation of the negation, that's a Hegelian phrase. So that, um, so that uh, uh, for example, in the mind-body dualism, as uh, the mind negates the body, the body then negates that negation and, and achieves self-conscious of its own. Uh, and, you know, uh, but then, uh, but then uh, ultimately this, this uh, evolves into a new stage of, of self-consciousness. And so this negation of the negation is about this self-consciousness and self-consciousness of Latin American culture. So everything begins through an affirmation, a self-affirmation. The negation of the negation, negating the negation that European laid, uh, Europeans laid on Latin America, this negation of the negation is the second moment. How can one negate the disparagement of oneself but through setting out on the path of the self-discovery of one's own value? This is the affirmation of an evolving and flexible identity in the face of modernity. Post-colonial cultures need effective decolonization, but for this they must begin with self-valorization putting value on oneself and finding value in one's own culture. Um, <clears throat> however, there are different ways to affirm oneself, some of which are misguided. For this reason, beginning with the example suggested in the first place, Al-Yabri criticizes the typical interpretations or hum her hermeneutic readings of the Islamic tradition by contemporary our Arab philosophy in the Muslim world. The first interpretive strand is that of fundamentalism, the Salafis. Um, this interpretation has an affirmative intention, like all the rest, since it attempts to recoup, uh, recuperate ancient Arab tradition in the present, but for Al-Yabri such a current is ahistorical, merely apologetic and traditionalist. Another interpretive strand is the liberal Europeanist, which claims to be merely modern, but in the end negates the past or does not know how to reconstruct it. The third is the leftist interpretation, Marxist Salafism. Uh, the question considering these three interpretive strands is, how can we reconstruct our legacy today? Okay, so this is a prog problematic. How do you reconstruct a legacy from the past that has been negated by the hegemonic European culture. It seems evident that the first step is to study that legacy affirmatively. Al-Yabri, a reader whose mother tongue is Arabic and whose training is in Islamic culture traditions, uh, cultural traditions, date back to childhood, has an enormous advantage above all the European and North American specialists who study the Arab world as a scientific object, as a foreign culture. Thus he reads the classics, grasps the neglected nuances, and he does this through contemporary French human hermeneutic philosophy that he, along with all the Maghrebs, has studied. In this way, he positively, and, and so, uh, you know, uh, 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 Libya, Algeria, Morocco, these were all dominated by the French Empire. Um, and so French is, uh, is a natural second language for uh, Arabic speakers in the Maghreb. Um, and and he, 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 thus he reads the classics in Arabic, gra grasps the neglected nuances, and he does this through contemporary French her hermeneutic philosophy that he, along with all Maghrebs, has studied. In this way, he positively expounds the thought of Al-Farabi, 
uh, Avicenna, uh, Avampas, Averroes, and Ibn Khaldun. But he does so not merely as an indigenous and apologetic pure affirmation. And remember, I've, I've talked about apologetics, uh, especially when I was talking about like the scholastics and Thomas Aquinas. When intellectual, when philosophers, let's call them philosophers, when they become purely apologist, when they're just trying to defend uh, a position against criticisms, the, the philosophy becomes, you know, it's, it's very mundane. Uh, juvenile is not, not very much help. It's, it's uncritical. It's not self-critical. And so apologetic philosophy is, is not critical thinking. Uh, because it's not self-critical. It's purely affirmative. Uh, it doesn't self-criticize. It doesn't self-negate. And, and the, in this Hegelian way, you do have to self-negate. Uh, on the plane of popular culture, another example, Rigoberta Menchu. In I, Rigoberta Menchu, an Indian woman in Guatemala, dedicates long chapters to the description of the culture of her Mayan village in Guatemala. She begins with a self-valorizing affirmation of herself, and this is the originary uh, reflection on, on, upon which she constructs her entire edifice. Against prevalent opinion, it is necessary to begin from the positive origin of one's own cultural tradition. This first step represents a reminiscence of the past from an identity which is prior to modernity or which has imperceptibly evolved in the inevitable and furtive contact with modernity. Okay, so and he says this this approach uh, of like Al Yabri and also of uh, Rigoberto Menchu uh, of delving into one's own cultural roots as a starting point is often seen as biased or uh, even non-intellectual, uh, non-philosophical, non-scientific by Eurocentric intellectuals and philosophers. But Dussel is saying that is exactly the place to start. Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right, and then I want to cut this off here and, and I'll, I'll do the next section uh, in a separate video.